people in Taraba showing their love for P2B, but we'll get back to that in a moment. Let's see the interesting and inspiring story of how P2B prevailed on the former president, Good Luck Jonathan, to intervene and get a refund from the Nigerian customs who sold Innocence hardware and goods that he imported for his factory worth about 800 million naira. The Nigerian customs sold the goods to a senator for a measly 35 million naira. Let's take a listen. <laughs> This is not the first time in Nigeria this type of exemplary leadership has been shown by a leader. That leader was the former president Musa Yaradua who reportedly banned Dangote from Asorok during his tenure. This was because Yaradua reversed the ban that Obasanjo placed on Ibe to cement in favor of Dangote. When Yaradua reversed the ban, Dangote sought his audience to maybe convince him to change his mind or reinstate the ban which he rejected and subsequently banned Dangote from visiting Asorok Presidential Villa. The lifting of the ban by Yaradua saved Ibeto from bankruptcy because he reportedly borrowed about 12 billion naira from banks in order to get into the cement industry. Likewise, Innocent, after building his vehicle plant in Newi, he got loans from financial institutions to enable him import hardware and vehicle parts to start operations, but unfortunately, he had problems with the Nigerian customs, who eventually sold them to a senator for 35 million naira. Even if the problem wasn't the fault of the Nigerian customs, that they were sort of forced to sell the goods on auction because they had to recover the duty cost and all that, why didn't they go for the market value? Why didn't they sell at least at 50% of the market value? Or is it a way to prove that they were just after the recovery of the duty? Anyway, this is Innocent Chukuma appreciating what P2B did for him during his early days. The governor said that we should not worry that he'll make the road. In the next few months, he made the road to the factory. When we started, and he see that the production is going well, uh, the governor said, can we, uh, are we producing now? I say, yes. he give us order over, over 500 units to encourage the factory. That's the first order we have. And he, he gave the second order after that. 
He have given us up to four orders since we started the factory, and he's giving us a large order keeping the factory busy. Still on the Nigerian customs, P2B explains how he was told by people about the numerous customs checkpoints along the Shagamu Benin Expressway and Benin Onisha Expressway. And in order to verify the claim, he had to make the journey by road himself to experience what road users and commuters experience on the highway on a daily basis. <laughs> We had this type of experience when we made the journey from Lagos to Newe a few months ago. There were several checkpoints, police checkpoints, army checkpoints, customs scattered everywhere along the entire stretch of more than 400 kilometers from Lagos to Shagamu, Benin, Asaba, Onisha. The number of checkpoints along this highway is too unbearable. It contributes to a lot of traffic jam along the highway. There is no reason a freeway that is supposed to be free of traffic should experience roadblocks. Security agents blocking the road with locks of wood in order to force road users to stop. They have no reason to do that in Nigeria of the 21st century. The army having roadblocks along the highway might be excusable because they are kind of assisting the police. We all know that police is understaffed. They don't have enough manpower to police the entire populace. But the Nigerian customs having roadblocks or checkpoints along the highway is unacceptable. In fact, it's an acceptance of failure and inefficiency. All imported goods pass through the Nigerian seaports, which are manned by Nigerian customs. How else or who else authorized the release of the goods to necessitate the Nigerian customs to stay on the highway again to check if duties were paid on those goods? Customs officers by definition should man entry points into the country. If they extend that entry point to mean inside the cities and anywhere in Nigeria along the highways, that means they are doing the work of the police, which is unacceptable. Isn't the customs supposed to check all imported vehicles to make sure that all duties were paid before they leave the port? Why should they extend the port into the cities? Why should the management of customs and the Ministry of Finance continue allowing the customs to run the port operations this way? Why shouldn't they endeavor and ensure that all duties were paid on all goods before they leave the port so that there will not be any need to check those goods again along the highway. The government should remove all checkpoints along the highways in Nigeria so as to promote tourism. Many people will hit the road with their cars if roads are free of traffic, free of unnecessary stops and checkpoints, you know. Imagine the farming communities that the highways in Nigeria traverses. Most of them harvest their agricultural produce and bring them out to sell along the highways. So the more people hit the road, the more sales these people will make. The more tourism is promoted in Nigeria because people will travel anywhere they want with their cars. They will stay in hotels. They will, you know, a lot of things will turn around because if you want the economy to be booming, you have to get people moving. Yes, this is P2B in Taraba State where he continued his tour of many communities that are affected by the recent floods. You can see the love that people show P2B. It is out of this world. This kind of love can't be bought. It's just too natural. P2B is a likable person, so it's not actually a surprise that people swarm around him wherever he goes. The fact that he's accessible draws people to him. For instance, Atiku visited Bayelsa after P2B left. And people affected by the flooding went to the government house to see him in Yenagoa, unlike Pito Obida went to meet them in their homes and communities. Huge difference there. Also, Bola Tinubu sent his wife to visit the people instead of him going by himself. Maybe that's why Pito Obi doesn't wear a life jacket when he rides on canoes in these communities. Because that would mean he isn't feeling the same way as a common man feels. He isn't experiencing what they experience on a daily. 
Most of these guys were born around water. Their work revolves around water and they are good swimmers. But that doesn't negate the fact that the life jackets should be worn by them or passengers. P2B also visited Ida in Kogi State in continuation of his tour of communities. While you enjoy the video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and enable notification to be notified to watch all future videos that will be uploaded on our channel. Thank you for your support. I give so that we have a new Nigeria. I want my grand my children and my grandchildren to enjoy what I enjoyed in Nigeria, not what is currently happening. Thank you for, 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 for.